I think it's important to try and do some other things that you're good at or other things that you enjoy. And so that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to put in some time on the tennis courts, uh, one of my favorite sports to play. And I'm going to put in another poker session later tonight. And I can almost 100% guarantee that I'm going to be playing No Limit Hold'em. All right, it's uh, Saturday here at California Grand Casino in Pacheco, California. It's about an hour drive from San Francisco and it's a weekend of changing things up. Played some PLO yesterday, didn't go so well and trying out a new property today. Several of you have mentioned that this place is worth checking out and most recently I bumped into a vlog supporter named Jack at Five Guys, which is a burger restaurant and he made the same uh, recommendation, so thank you for that. And yeah, currently playing the 2-3-5 game, been on the table for about a couple hours. Uh, it's a 10-handed game here, uh, but our table has been short pretty much the whole time, so I've been playing maybe seven or eight-handed most of the time. Uh, two tables, one of the slower Saturdays, it sounds like, from the talk amongst the regulars here. It's been relatively so-so thus far, not too many uh, interesting spots, and most people are playing pretty straightforward, so not too much action to be had thus far. Yeah, relatively card dead so far, but a few hands to run through. Uh, in this first hand, there's an under the gun limp. The cutoff raises to $25. I'm on the button with 8-9 off suit. I decided to make the call here a little bit loose, but uh, I've seen this player open with a variety of hands and I have position, so I think it's okay. And the under the gun player calls as well. Flop comes, ace, nine, six, two spades. Uh, action checks through. Uh, the turn brings a seven. Uh, checks to the initial raiser and he puts out a bet of $40. Middle pair here with the open-ended straight draw, not going anywhere, so I make the call and the other player fold. River brings a four of clubs, he checks it, and I don't put him on a pair of aces here. He can have some other pocket pairs uh, that obviously beat me here, like middling pairs and even hand like queens or kings maybe. Uh, but I feel pretty strongly, uh, just given the game flow, that he may have a hand like as weak as 7-8, as 7-10, maybe in pocket five. So. Looking to target that hand, make a very thin value bet, and I put out a bet of $45. He thinks it through for a little bit, makes the call. I turn my hand over and it turns out to be just thin enough because he announces that he has pocket eight. So take it down here with a nice little value bet here on the river. In this next hand, there's an under the gun raise to $20, under the gun plus one. Puts in a three bet, pretty small one to $50. Gets to me in the big blind with ace queen off suit. And given the sizing here, I think it's okay to call. So that's what I do. And the under the gun player calls as well. Three ways to a flop of queen, four, three, rainbow. Checks over to three better. He puts out a pretty small continuation bet, $60. Pretty straightforward call here. So that's what I do. And the under the gun player folds. Turn comes a six of hearts. I don't think it changes too much here. And I check it and he checks it back. The river pairs the three and I decide to put out a bet of $160. Uh, hoping to target a hand like jacks tens maybe ace king that's non-believing here or maybe even some smaller pocket pairs but uh, looking back on it i don't really like the bet here because I, I don't i'm not sure he's calling with those hands so all that being said he actually puts in a min raise he raises it to 320 dollars. so it uh, looks like i get trapped here i make the pretty quick fold and he was kind enough to show his hand and he had pocket queen so get away from it there i think if i checked on the river He's probably putting a bet out around probably my sizing anyway. So I think I would have lost that regardless. So uh, yeah, lose this one here. All right, last interesting hand of note thus far. Uh, we're playing five handed and there's an under the gun race to $15. The next player over makes the call. I'm in the small blind with a seven off suit. It's not the easiest hand to play post flop out of position. I think it plays better as a three bet. So that's what I do. Uh, play it as a three bet bluff here. And I raise it to $75 and only the initial raiser makes the call. Flop comes king five five with two hearts. I make a pretty standard down continuation bet of $50 with range advantage of course. And he makes a pretty quick fold. So it uh, goes to show I think uh, to three bet this hand is a little bit easier to play post flop. If I had just taken a call line, I probably have to check fold to a bet on the flop. Uh, and just not really know where I'm at. So happy to take it down here. So those are the most interesting spots so far uh, in the game for 900, currently stuck about two or 300. Hope to turn it around. Uh, I've been struggling the last couple of vlogging sessions, but luckily in between those sessions, I've put in some winning sessions that are non-vlogging, but it'd be nice to get back on the uh, 
winning side of things on the vlog. So let's hop back in there and see if uh, I can do that. All right, just wrapping up a session here at California Grand Casino. It's about 2 a.m. and it was a very swingy session. So I'm gonna run through the hands here. All right, in this first hand, it's a five-way limped pot. I have king eight off suit on the button. Uh, just put the additional $3 to call. We go five ways to a flop of king, five, deuce, rainbow. Checks to the cutoff. He puts out a bet of $20 and only I make the call. The turn comes a nine of hearts and he puts out a bet of $45. Uh, the Nine of Hearts brings in a backdoor flush draw here, and while I don't have a backdoor flush draw, I do have a King of Hearts in my hand, so that's actually going to play a bit of a role in this hand on the river. Uh, I decide to make the call. The river comes a Six of Hearts, which completes a variety of draws here. It brings in the backdoor flush draw, it brings in 3-4 for the straight, and occasionally 7-8 as well for the gut shot straight. He puts out another small bet uh, to the tune of $50. And it feels pretty value heavy here with a hand like a better king, I think, most of the time. And even a hand like a small two pair. And I've got an interesting uh, hand holding here because I have the king of hearts in my hand. I do block flushes and the eight also blocks straights. So I take a pretty unique line and I turn my value based hand into a river bluff. And I raise it to $220. And yeah, really hoping to get him off a one pair type holding or a small two pair. Uh, he doesn't think too long and he makes the call. So not good news. And he turns over king nine. Uh, for the turn two pair. So I think if it wasn't for that exact hand holding, I think he's gonna have to think it through a little bit more and possibly find a fold, but not this time. All right, this next hand, it's a straddle pot. There's one limber. I'm on the button with pocket kings and I raise it to $55 and both players make the call. We go through ways to a flop of 886 rainbow. Checks to me, good spot. I think it's a value bet. So I put out a bet of $75 and only the straddler makes the call. The turn brings a 10 of hearts, and when he checks it, I decide to check it back as well because the 10 brings in the most obvious straight draw being 7-9 here. River comes a 7 of diamonds, and this time he leads for $70. I think I can usually find a fold here, but at this, at this price, I kind of just want to see what he has, and I get a little bit stationy, and I make the call, and he turns over jack-8 of clubs. So he takes this one down. Yeah, aside from these two hands, just ran kind of bad in the first few hours of this session, and. Uh, did a lot of raise and whiff type situations. I got myself stuck in the neighborhood of about $1,000 to $1,200. So not feeling that good about the session. Uh, and then this next hand comes up. There's an early position limp. I'm in late position and I make a pretty loose open with 9-10 offsuit. I raise it to $25. The small blind and limper make the call. We go three ways to a flop of 7-5-3, two spades. Action checks through. The turn comes a nine of hearts and small blind leads for $25. The other position player calls, and given the small bet size from small blind and the relatively passive line from the other player, I decided to put in a raise for value with top pair here, and I raised it to $120. Small blind folds and early position call. The river brings another nine, so I make trip nines on this river, and he checks it, and I put out a smallish bet of $80, hoping to get value from second pair or weaker here. He thinks it through for a little bit, he puts in a raise. He raises to $205 essentially announcing that he has a nine as well, but uh, probably a better kicker than mine most of the time. Uh, that being said, it's not much more, so I make the call, and he actually turns over nine six of clubs. So my kicker does play, and I take this uh, hand down to start to build some momentum. All right, in this next hand, there's a middle position player who's on the tighter end of the spectrum. He raises to $25. I'm in the small line with pocket tens. A pretty interesting hand here. I think it makes sense to call and try to set mine in the spot against a pretty tight player. But at the same time, uh, I think raising here has some merit just so I can get a better sense of where I'm at in the hand. And because we're playing about a thousand effective, I think uh, that's the better play. So I settle on a three bet to $135 and only the middle position player makes the call. We go heads up to a flop of Jack 7-3 rainbow. I put in a down continuation bet of $90. He doesn't think too long and he makes the call. Turn is a pretty sweet gin card. It comes a 10 of hearts. So I make middle set on this board and I continue betting. I put out a bet of $190. And as he's thinking, he's grabbing a pile of chips here. Uh, so getting a little bit worried that he might have uh, pocket jacks, but he does something that you should never do. And in the corner of my eye, I can see him thinking through about his hand. He actually kind of whispers to himself, man, there's only one hand that beats me. And so when he says that, I know he has pocket kings, uh, a little bit of an unfortunate spot for him uh, to be doing that in the first place, but also having me be aware enough to pick that up during the hand. And after thinking it through for a little bit, he does make the call. The river comes in Ace of Diamonds, and normally I'd be scared of this card uh, because he could have river top set, but 
As I mentioned, he gave uh, a literal tell by, <laughs> by announcing his hand there on the turn, so I can effectively bet here for value. I sized down a bit, I bet $300, just hoping to uh, try and get a call. And after thinking it through for just a quick little bit, he does make the call. So turn my hand over and uh, he's pretty mad at himself uh, as he talks about how he should have played the hand differently. And yeah, take this one down. So at the lowest point, I was actually stuck in the neighborhood of $1,700. I'm in this game for $2,500. And after winning those two hands, I was able to essentially battle back a bit and pretty much be even up to this point. Uh, and that's when this next hand comes up. There's a player in the cutoff and he's been opening to pretty large sizes and no different here as he raises it to $50. I'm on the button with Ace-King offsuit. He's got about another $580 left in his stack. And I decided to put in a three bet here. I raised it to $200, a pretty big three bet. And when it gets back to this player, he goes all in for $635 total. Pretty much what I expected to happen and happy to get the money in here. So I make the quick call. He turns over pocket queens. The board runs out king, jack, eight with two clubs. The turn brings a six of clubs and this player does have the queen of clubs in his hand. So got a fade here and the river brings a jack of clubs. So. Uh, he makes the flush and he takes this pot down. So not exactly happy, obviously, with the result. And in thinking it back, I think sometimes it's pr probably a little bit more profitable to have just called in position there and play a flop. And I think I could have maneuvered that flop there to maybe take this hand down. But uh, obviously being a little bit results oriented in this hand, given that I battled back to even and now uh, lose $600 back right away. All right, and the hand immediately after that hand, there's an under the gun raise to $25, middle position calls. I'm in the cutoff with pocket king. So put in a three bet here to $120 and both players make the call. We go three ways to a flop of 10, 10, three rainbow. Checks the middle position. He puts out a pretty large bet, $200. And he's either got a 10 or he's bluffing here, but I don't think I can get away just yet. So I make the call and the other player folds. Uh, middle position has about another $700 back. The turn is an eight of spades, putting a backdoor flush on the board. And he doesn't stop betting, he puts out a bet of $300, only leaving $400 back. And I think it's pretty unlikely for him to have any backdoor flush draws here, particularly because I have uh, that blocked in my hand. And if he were bluffing, I would expect him to just jam here more than just putting in the bet size that he did. So all that considered, I just make the fold. And he doesn't tell me what he has, but uh, I'm pretty sure he should have a 10 there. And yeah, lose this one. So yeah, pretty rough to lose $900 there in back-to-back -back hands after battling back to essentially be breaking even for the session. And that's when this next hand comes up. There's a hijack raise to $25. I'm on the button with ace queen off suit. I put in a three bet to $100 and this player makes the call. We go heads up to a flop of ace, ace, 10. So I smash this flop. He checks, I put a down continuation bet of $60 and it induces him. He puts in a raise to $200 and a good spot to just call here, so that's what I do. The turn comes a three of diamonds. He checks it and I decided to check it back. In hindsight, I would have liked to bet here sometimes just because I think it could sort of look like I'm making a stab at the pot. Uh, but if he does in the off chance have a flush there, I'm probably getting raised and not loving it. So okay with the check as well. The river is a blank deuce of hearts. He checks it. I go big and polarize uh, to the tune of $400. He makes a pretty quick fold. So. Unfortunate that my turn check doesn't bring in any additional value here, but still happy to take it down. All right, last interesting hand of note, and the game got pretty action heavy as evidenced by this hand. There's an early position raise to $25, middle position makes the call. The cutoff puts in a three bet to $95, and the button cold calls $95, and I've got ace jack of clubs in the small blind. We're pretty deep here, we're about 1500 effective, so uh, I make the call as well. The original early position raiser, he makes the call and the middle position calls as well. We go five ways to a flop of ace, four, three, rainbow. Checks over to middle position. He goes all in for $350. The cutoff and the button make pretty quick folds. So I think I have a pretty easy call here with ace jack. So that's what I do. And the other player open folds pocket queen. And the cutoff player announces that he had pocket king. So that should further confirm that the jack kicker is good here. The board runs out a 10 of hearts. So a little bit worried now because now I'm losing to ace 10. And the river brings a nine of diamonds. And after a few seconds, he turns over his hand. He's got ace seven of diamonds. So the jack kicker holds and plays here. And I take down a pretty nice pot to wrap up the session. So yeah, that wraps up one of the most swingy sessions I've had in a really long time was in the game for a total of $2,500. And as mentioned, I was stuck in the neighborhood of 1,700 at my lowest point and ultimately battled back to cash out 
$3,450. After being down piles, was able to battle back and book a $950 win. So yeah, it feels pretty good to persevere through this particular session, especially because it was following a pretty big losing session at the PLO game the previous night. So yeah, closing things out here from California Grand Casino. Really happy to have checked out this property, uh, not just because of the result, but it's a really nice little card room here. It's really intimate and all of the staff were super friendly and on point. So nothing but positive things to say about this property and we'll definitely be back at some point. All that being said, it's a good session. Definitely check out this property if you've never been here and I'll catch you all on the next one.